Well, one thing I would say to you immediately is here at the Kiev Security Forum, there's been a primary focus on the importance of Ukraine becoming a member of NATO. And in fact, I would say that most of those who are here have well articulated how critical it is that Ukraine becomes a member. Because security will not be guaranteed unless that happens. The second issue is, though, the timing of this. And I would say that there were some who indicated that the expectation is that this will not happen at Vilnius. My own view is it should happen at Vilnius. Um, if it isn't stated so clearly, it needs to be stated that there must be a clear path forward in a defined amount of time when Ukraine is brought in. So simply put, Ukraine must become a member of NATO. It's not only in Ukraine's interest in terms of the provision of security guarantees, but it's also in the interest of the transatlantic community, and the United States is certainly part of that. So we've seen that Russia and China have become not an allies, but at the same time very close partners in their anti-Western foreign policy. And what are your reflections about their cooperation during the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine? Well, uh, China has indicated that it has backed Russia. I think that's a mistake because uh, China often speaks of the importance of rule of law. And here, rule of law has been broken at so many different levels. The unprovoked aggression of Ukraine, the violation of Ukraine's sovereign territory, the violation of taking children and bringing them, you know, uh, kidnapping them and bringing them into Russia is horrendous, an absolute violation of human rights. I could go on. So in this case, uh, I think it's rather uh, 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 disappointing and uh, unfortunate that China has not demonstrated uh, greater leadership and in not just simply backing uh, this aggression, this outright aggression. I think that China will have issues to deal with because of that uh, uh, in this case. Let me make another point, if I may, that I think is important here. Many Asian countries are very much focused on the outcome and the strong view that Ukraine must win this war that it's not just only in Ukraine's interest, it's in the interest of the European community, but it's also in the interest of the Indo-Pacific. Xi Jinping of China has indicated how he wants uh, Taiwan. And clearly, if there is a foundation laid here for aggression and the illegal seizure of independent and sovereign territory, well, that provides a blueprint for action there in China and in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, the Jap Japanese uh, Prime Minister said very clearly, Ukraine's victory matters to us because we do not want to have a signal sent that aggressors anywhere will be able to proceed without any kind of impunity of action. Final question to you, so what are reflections about the U.S. leadership in support of Ukraine, the Biden administration, and how it can be improved, maybe, in your point of view? I think, let me make three points in response to your question. First, I think that the administration is to be commended for its diplomacy. I think it has worked very hard to galvanize a community of nations behind a common purpose, and the purpose is to support Ukraine and to ensure that Ukraine succeeds in winning this war. Secondly, the administration has also done and, and taken an important step, and that is simultaneously to also demonstrate that it's not only about winning the war, but it's also about winning the peace. Here, in terms of the rebuilding of Ukraine, 
and there was a U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, um, gathering, massive gathering, at which uh, the U.S. Secretary of Commerce was there with Ukraine's Prime Minister and talking about the kinds of steps that must be taken for Ukraine's recovery. Uh, security must be achieved first, but there must be this ongoing discussion at the same time to ensure that these issues are addressed and the foundation is laid. And then finally, there's another issue here, and that's the apprehension of war criminals. The United States Department of Justice has also set up an office to deal with war criminals, and specifically in this case of Ukraine, which I think is a very important step. So those are some good steps. I think the area that needs to be improved upon, the military equipment absolutely cannot be moved at a glacial or slow pace. Ukraine has made requests in order to be victorious and be decisive here. That equipment is needed. It's needed quickly and directly.